Hi, it's Sam from Another Math. Easy solution. Trying to discuss uh, just critical numbers and also go over an example on it. Basically, uh, before I get to that, I want to recap on Fermat's theorem, which I went over in my last video. And this just states if you have a function f has a local maximum or minimum at c, and if the derivative exists at c, then that derivative has to be equal to zero. So uh, make sure to watch my earlier video if you haven't already. Basically, Fermat's theorem suggests that we should at least start looking for extreme values or absolute or local max and minimums of f at number c where the derivative either is equal to zero or does not exist and such numbers are given a special name and they're called basically critical numbers or a critical number right here of a function f is basically any number c in the domain of f such that the derivative is either equal to zero or does not exist. Fermat's theorem only deals with when it does exist, but I'll, I'll show you it later. We'll rewrite it in terms of critical numbers. So what this is saying right here, yeah, this is this definition of critical numbers. Basically, if you had a function, let's say like this, where you were going like this, and all of a sudden, let's say you have a sharp turn like that, and also go, going something like this, etc. So then in this case here, we're gonna have, since this one, the derivative does not exist right here. Like I showed, if this for absolute values or anything, a sharp turn right here, the derivative on the right side is going to be different from the left side. You can see it's different right here. The slopes, it's going to go, this one's going up, this one's going down right here. So then at this point, let's call this C1. And also at this point right here, where there is a, uh, where the derivative is going to be zero in this case. The derivative at this point is zero, so C2. And also this point right here is going to be what's well, called the C3. Yeah, this is C3. And in this case, C1, C2, C3 are all critical numbers. And that's because in this case right here, the derivative is equal to zero. This one derivative is equal to zero. And in this case right here at this point, this derivative at prime at C1 is, e is basically does not exist. I'll just go D and E. So it does not exist. So now, yeah, we could actually rewrite Fermat's theorem because remember Fermat's theorem is stating that if if there's a local max or minimum, in this case, local max, local minimum, and and they're given that there's a derivative exists and the derivative has to be zero. That's this. But if we rewrite it in terms of critical numbers, we can write if f has a local max or min at c. So this is a local max or minimum. All three of these are then c is a critical number right here. So we don't need to stick with the derivative equal to zero. And because the, the critical number deals with both this case and these uh, when this is zero, the derivative, uh, as opposed to the conventional theorem, this is only when it's zero. And now the example I want to go over is this one right here, which just states find critical numbers of this function fx equals to x to the power of three over five times it by four minus x right here. So to find critical numbers, First thing we got to do is find the derivative, but actually uh, let's just rewrite this uh, further. We could write fx, if we multiply this out, just make it easier to take derivative. It's going to be 4x, 3 to the power of 5, and then minus now x times it by there. So we're going to have x times it by x, 3 over 5. Now this x is going to be the same thing as 5 over 5, and then we can add these up using just regular power properties, power function properties. You can see more on that in the video link below. This would add up, so this will be equal to 4x, 3 over 5 minus x. This is going to be add up 5 and 8, 3, so 8 over 5. So that's our f of x. So we take the derivative, we're going to get, yeah, if we take the derivative, we're going to get f of x equals 2. Bring this down 3 over 5. So 3 times 4 is 12, divided by 5, just multiply that out. And then this is going to be now using power rule for derivatives, minus this by 1, or 5 over 5. That's going to be negative 2 to the power of, I'm divided by 5. And then minus now, bring this down, 8 over 5, x, 3 over 5. So just subtract that below. So now we get this one. Now to get the derivative, I mean, to get the critical numbers, we have to set this equal to 0. But in fact, before we get that, we can see it directly from this. We just rewrite this a bit neater. This will be 12 over 5. And I'll bring this down. That's a negative power. So negative. Uh, now it's going to be 2 over 5 right here. So divided by x to the power 2 over 5 minus now 8 over 5 x 3 over 5. And the reason I wrote this down is because from this now, because remember, you can't divide by 0. So then this, this part can't equal to 0. 
So in this case, the only way that's equal to zero is if x equals zero. So basically, the derivative does not exist right here. I'll write d and e does not exist when x is equal to zero. So basically, we have one critical number right here. So now to find the other ones or other one, we just have to plug make this derivative equal to zero. So we get f prime of x equal to zero. This would equal 2, 12 over 5, x, 2 over 5, and then minus 8 over 5, x, 3 over 5. So now to do this, uh, what we could do is multiply both sides by the this, by this denominator here to get rid of this x to the power of 2 over 5. So we multiply both sides, and the right side, I mean the left side is going to be just 0. So times it by 5, x, 2 over 5, just to cancel everything out. So then this one here, even if we multiply, is going to be 0. So we're going to be left with 0 is equal to, this bottom is going to cancel. So 12 minus now, now this is going to be 5 over 5 is going to cancel. So we're going to have an 8 right here. And also we're going to have x 3 over 5 times by x 2 over 5. Remember, they just add up. So we're going to be left with 0 equals 12 minus 8x. And then this is going to be 3 over 5 plus uh 2 over 5, that's going to be 5 over 5, or just x. So we just stick this, leave it with this, rearrange the solve for x, we get x is equal to, bring this over to this side and subtract, and then divide by 8, 12 over 8. This just equals to divide by 4 on both sides, 3 over 2. So we have a critical numbers of, yes, yeah, so there's our critical number. So because we know that f prime of 3 over 2 equals 0. So our critical numbers... Yeah, our critical numbers are x equals to 0 and 3 over 2. And here, if you were to basically graph out uh, this function here, as you can see, this does make sense. 3 over 2 is going to be 1.5. That's over here. And as you see, there is a horizontal tangent right here, or the derivative is equal to 0. And also now when we look at the 0, as you see, there's a vertical line right here, or vertical tangent. So we can't have an infinite slope. So then this basically f prime is equal to uh, infinity or does not exist right here. D and E does not exist. As you can see, that just yeah makes sense that we got these answers. So this is the critical points for this function. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this video and this example. Uh, remember, you can download these notes in the link below and also watch other related videos in the link bo links below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.